Sigma Tiger News, all of your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Bella Clava clad creeps, fake crime immigrant, American flag trauma, and whack Arnold's is expensive. <laughs> Well, we're going to make this one a quick hitter as we can because it's a nice, beautiful day outside. The tiger is teeming for some hot sun. Teen fatally stabbed in front of girlfriend by Bella Clava clad creeps who were collecting blood debt after spring break feud. State the cops. Okay, well, let's dive right in. Goodness. The teens who allegedly fatally stabbed a Wyoming boy trying to protect his girlfriend had been in a weeks-long feud with the victim and asked one of his pals if he wanted to fight them to pay his blood debt, officials said. Dominique Harris and Jareth Plunkett, both 15, who are charged in the fatal stabbing of Bobby Mayer on Sunday, had wanted to fight the teen since having a competition with him about two weeks ago during spring break at a park in Evansville, according to the Casper Star Tribune, which cited an affidavit detailing a police interview with Harris. Mayer had apparently called Harris and Plunkett freaks after they went to a porta potty together at the park, the affidavit stated. In his interview with cops, Harrison Plunkett also asked Mayer's friend if he wanted to fight them to pay the teen's blood debt after the porta potty episode. On Sunday afternoon, Harrison Plunkett arrived at the Eastridge Mall where they allegedly stole Red Bulls, sour candy, and two kitchen knives at a Target, the Star Tribune reported, citing the affidavit. Harris stated Plunkett had taken the knife knowing they were going to fight Mayer, according to the affidavit. Harris gave the knife he stole to someone else because he was on probation due to previous theft charges, officials said. Meanwhile, Mayer had arrived at the mall after his girlfriend called to say the two suspects were following her and a friend around, officials said. Mayer tried to usher his girlfriend and friend away from the mall in a bid to keep them safe while telling the two suspects to leave court paper state. Here's an individual of the victim. Uh, image, sorry. Uh, video of the altercation that led to the fatal stabbing shows that Mayer clearly did not want to fight because he was observed moving away from the knife-wielding Plunkett, the affidavit said. Mayer also put his hands up, indicating uh, that his hands were empty at states. Plunkett told investigators that his alleged accomplice asked him to put the knife away. This isn't fair. To which Plunkett replied, I don't play fair, according to the affidavit. Savannah's video allegedly shows Mayer backing away from his alleged attackers, who were wearing hooded, balaclava-style masks, as Plunkett told him to swing on him several times. Harris was allegedly captured on video, picking up Mayer by his waist and slamming him to the ground before repeatedly punching his face. Moments later, Plunkett stepped in and could be seen plunging the kitchen-style knife into the victim, according to the affidavit. The suspects fled and allegedly dumped a bloodied knife and their masks in the parking lot, cops said. Plunkett and Harris were charged as adults with conspiracy to commit murder, aggravated assault, battery, and theft. Plunkett is also charged with first-degree murder for allegedly stabbing Mayer. One of the victim's friends later told police that the two suspects attended the same Dean Middle School as the victim, but they only knew him as J.J. and Dom. Meanwhile, Mayer's grieving father uh, posted a heartbreaking message on Facebook about the loss. Bobby, rests in peace. My baby, I miss you so much. Daddy was so proud of you and loved you so much, so very much. We are so devastated that nothing can bring you back. We love you. You will never be forgotten. So yeah, you know, tell your children, uh, tell your family, your friends, everyone, how much you care for them and love them. Because there are creepy thugs out there that use the bathroom together that are willing to steal things to murder you with. And we all know uh, these Bella Clava clad people creeps you know why aren't they talking about them you know i'm dying inside and out right now and will be forever he added the community has also launched a blue hearts for bobby facebook group for money candlelight vigil on thursday the image of the uh, boy on very unfortunate i'm joining hands with many to share a simple powerful symbol a blue heart and loving memory of bobby a bright young life tragically cut short one user wrote this blue heart is more than just a tribute it's a pledge to carry forward the kindness bobby embodied a stand against the darkness of bullying and a beacon of hope for a world more compassionate he added a fellow student posted a drawing in memory of the slain teen i want to take a moment and draw a bear holding a heart with a basketball beside the bear for bobby when i st started it it made me want to cry because he went to the same school as me and he was in my pe class my pe feels like it's nothing no more the two suspects had their bond set at five hundred thousand to four hundred fifty thousand, respectively during their initial court hearing on monday yeah, there you have it. Um, no information on the color uh, or race of the two uh, alleged uh, perpetrators, but uh, I think we both know.
or all know. There's more than two people watching. <laughs> Updated teenage girl brutally assaulted by thugs in Byram Park in Greenwich while onlookers cheered recorded it, the attack. All right, the uh, Centennial has obtained six additional videos of the savage assault on a teen girl in Byron Park, Greenwich. The new videos, which are longer and higher resolution, so faces can be more easily identified, appear to reveal that a number of adolescents and young adults in the group had been drinking and were drunk at the time of the incident. The victim was seen visibly upset uh, before the assault, while arguments ensued over whether rumors were being spread about someone. The names of several perpetrators are included in text overlaid in one of the videos. Another video... Further includes a screenshot of a social media post that said, Bro, over the N-word, y'all jump a girl? Uh, she could have died, and you were just standing there filming. So effing brutal. Like, actually effing disgusting. I'm reporting this uh, S-H-I-T. Bro, y'all ghetto as F. She could have died. Meanwhile, you can clearly see the face of one youth sporting an oversized afro filming right up in the victim's face right after she was merciless, mercilessly mercilessly beating to the ground and clearly unable to stand on her own. The video is shocking, to say the least. All right, so a white female Greenwich high school student was brutally assaulted by at least two black youths in Byron Park in Greenwich, Connecticut around 8.25 last night, April 9th. While Greenwich police have not yet released details regarding the identity of the suspects and the exact nature of the altercations, the Centennial has reviewed video of the assault. See below. The video starts by showing a white female getting attacked by at least two black youth. Though it is unclear what prompted the initial attack, the girl was repeatedly punched, thrown down, dragged to the ground while onlookers recorded and screamed, Whoa! And that's right! Uh, then the victim appears to sit up, surrounded by a large group of people still yelling at the victim, who then says something to the effect of, Are you going to hit me again, N-word? At which point someone screams, What? And absolute chaos ensues. Two people then repeatedly and violently punched the victim until she laid unconscious on the ground. The out-of-control group of youths can be heard initially egging the fight on and laughing until someone started screaming, chill, chill, chill. After the victim was left to lie motionless on the ground, you can hear black youth, picture below, excitedly declaring, that bitch got knocked the f out, and while others can be heard suggesting she got what she deserved uh, for saying the N-word. Yeah, okay, so uh, are we going to go ahead and have a look at this? All right, that's enough. So we can see what's happening. A, a mob of people who were offended decided to get some vigilante justice on this young white girl, and they beat her senseless and unconscious and cheered it on. So there you have it. Uh, you know, happens in all kinds of races and cultures, not just black people attacking white people all the time. I mean, if you go down south, it's white people attacking white people. There's all kinds of racism, whether it's black against white, white against black, Asian against white, white against Asian. It's everywhere, and it's a problem. Under the skin, we're all the same within. So who cares? But she definitely shouldn't have dropped that N-bomb. That's just inappropriate. Gas station robbery that ended with bystander killing suspect was staged as part of a visa scheme. Looks like we got a fake crime immigrant here. So what's the point? Why would they be doing this? Why did they want to get locked up? Uh, police said the robber and another suspect had staged similar schemes going back to 2023. Well, what's going on? A gas station robbery in January that ended with a bystander shooting and killing the robber was apparently a scheme between him and the victims who were trying to get temporary immigration status. But how? Court documents reviewed by Fox News Digital indicate 22-year-old Rashawn Scott had coordinated the fake robbery with another man named William Winfrey. Police later found telegram messages between the two. The idea was that Scott would pretend to rob two victims who would then file for U visas, U non-immigrant status, is set aside for victims of certain crimes who have suffered mental or physical abuse and are helpful to law enforcement or government officials in the investigation or prosecution of criminal activity. So what that says is that if you've entered the country illegally but are the victim of a crime, you get to stay forever. So that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to set up uh, a fake crime so they could get fake immigrant status. So these are honest people, obviously. Like most illegal immigrants are totally honest because the first thing they do is enter the country illegally so they're totally good they're honest trust them on january 27th scott pretended to rob two people at swift gas station at 4400 lockwood drive that's when a bystander identified as jesus vargas allegedly shot and killed scott court documents say vargas told police he fled the scene because he was violating his parole by being in possession of a gun not looking good for you vargas 
but hey great work on uh, um, stopping a crime and being a good citizen unfortunately you shot the dude right in the head and murdered him Scott's now widowed fiance uh, Sadie Beverly did not excuse Scott's activity but told Fox that the real issue is lax gun laws of course that's the real issue it's not the fact that they're illegal immigrants trying to get a free ticket into the country they need to change I don't see how people are able to say it's okay to take somebody's life. It's never okay. Well, it's not okay to fake rob people and put yourself in a situation where you could be murdered. Stupid. I mean, it's like this. Uh, there's this black guy right now. It's all in the news. Maybe we'll cover it tomorrow. And, uh, well, the cops pulled him over for not wearing a seatbelt. And they're like, get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. And then they backed up and pulled out their weapon and said, get out of the car. Get out of the car. And then guess what the black guy did? He shot 11 times. And the big news story is that uh, police unloaded over 100 rounds in 49 seconds onto a uh, black individual at a traffic stop. Whoa. They don't even mention the fact that this individual is a felon and he had a gun and he shot first. So, you know, he's not a victim. He's a criminal. And he got shot because he's dumb and he was driving around with a gun and then he decided to unload the gun onto police. So there you go. Moving right ahead uh we got james o'keefe with that hot juicy beef breaking inside the federal reserve hidden camera captures principal economist talking about jerome powell's legacy as somebody who held the line against like trump the influential agency responsible for maintaining a stable monetary system appears to not just be establishing interest rates but to be setting policies for desired social outcomes so what is the federal reserve a lot of people believe it's like the bank of america but no it's a privately held institution that was uh enacted uh, by Woodrow Wilson right after the Titanic sank with all the ultra-rich who were opposed to it. Wonder what happened there. And then uh, literally the next day, Woodrow Wilson was like, this is the biggest mistake I ever made. And he was pressured by J.B. Morgan and all of his uh, rich cronies to go ahead and get this Federal Reserve on the go so they could control the monetary system. Well, it's even worse now. Under Powell, the Fed has changed to think about equity issues like racial issues. Think about wealth inequality as part of the mandate, as part of the things we are following. Think about climate change. Oral Hismo, uh, principal economist at the Federal Reserve, who prior to working at the Fed was an assistant professor at NYU Stern and received his PhD in economics from Duke University, helps write speeches for Federal Reserve Board Chair Jerome Powell for the Federal Open Market Committee. Hismo says Trump is just a crazy person and conservatives are dumb. As he describes to uh, OMG's American Swiper Citizen Journalist, a politicized Federal Reserve Board, where Powell has promoted uh, ESG issues like climate change and wants to be remembered in history as a savior. But shh, don't tell anyone because Hismo says, I'm uh, just really worried that I'm saying stuff that's classified. It's all classified. So good job, stupid. All these people are dumb. Like, uh, there's no other definition for it. If you're going to do something that puts you in uh, a situation where you're going to get in trouble or killed, then you are literally stupid. Like, do you have any cognitive ability to uh, discern, hey, if I carry a toy gun down the road and point it at houses, uh, a cop might show up? Yeah, well, just like this. You got busted, dummy. And uh, ESG... Uh, what's that? Social governance. Ec uh, environmental social governance. Just like DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Just these buzzwords that create taxes on the normal people and get them to pay for stuff that's unnecessary. Anyway, California has no idea how much its homeless programs are costing, audit finds. Yeah, well, if you've been to California, San Francisco, this is what it looks like, people. It's literally tent city, encampments everywhere, and people are like hooked on drugs. They're all passed down the street. Philadelphia is like it too. It's absolutely disgusting. Covered that. Well, California lacks information on the cost or efficacy of its homelessness programs, despite allocating billions of dollars to them, a report released by the State Auditor's Office on Tuesday found. California Interagency, Intra-Agency Council on Homelessness is responsible for coordinating and evaluating the efforts of California State Agency in reducing homelessness. ICH, however, has not consistently tracked and evaluated the state's efforts to prevent and end homelessness. And as a result, California lacks current information on the ongoing costs and outcomes of its homeless programs. Accountability. Let's just go ahead and spend, spend, spend. This is the liberal way. And then just not write any of it down. And we'll just look back and be like, oh, well, it didn't work. Uh, uh, I didn't know anything about that. I mean, we're trying to help people. You're trying to stop us from helping people? We're trying to help people. And it's literally the liberal way. It's like, 
literally just scream vomit onto people that everything they're doing is incorrect and if you're questioning us then you're obviously a bigot or uh, some sort of racist or you're against uh, you know diversity equity or inclusion you're obviously like a some sort of monster but the truth is that they just spend money they throw money anywhere they can put it and usually to their crony buddies uh, in the industry and guess what comes of it debt and poor programs. Homeless population in California has grown from 118,552 in 2003 to 181,399 in 2023. According to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, California has allocated almost $24 billion to homelessness and housing services over the past five fiscal years. What the f is that? $24 billion for 181,399 people. So, like, do the math on that. Like, why couldn't they just build them a little shack and be like, here you go. There you go. You're good. ICH has not tracked this funding according to the auditor's report. State funding for homelessness programs either goes to counties, cities, or third parties, who then provide services for the homeless on its behalf. The report explains sometimes cities and counties will themselves pass off state funding to third parties to run homelessness programs, and those third parties sometimes pass off the funding to subcontractors. Yeah, we got the money. What do we do? Hey, Bill, Bob, my good buddies, you guys got some homeless programs? Oh, yeah, we're going to totally give the homeless a good program as they just fill their coffers. And no one cares because no one audited them, them for like five years, six years, ten years. Uh, so guess what? The money is going in the pockets of the people, not the homeless. It's clear. That's exactly what's happening. All right, anyway, California is gone. Rants. Dance team told American Flag Shirt made some feel triggered and unsafe. Some. So what's the total number? Is it the person who brought it up saying, mm-hmm, uh, populism and uh, uh, patrioticness makes me uncomfortable. So what? Uncomfort is not a problem. And look at it. It's just a shirt with the American flag and they're cowboys. So what if someone's offended by cowboys? Cowboy hats. Well, I don't like the way that they ride bulls. That's not right. Anyway, members of regional women's country line dance team said they were effectively kicked out of a Seattle dance con convention after organizers claimed their American flag-themed shirts made some attendees feel triggered and unsafe for the flag of the country they live in. My goodness, what are you doing here then? Go up to Canada. There's lots of flags there. Colorful ones. The borderline dance team was invented to the Emerald City hoedown in Seattle this past weekend. They said the organizers, the Rain Country Dance Association and LGBTQ plus dance community has been inviting them to come to its dance convention for years and they were finally able to accommodate. But when they arrived this past Saturday at the event, they said they didn't get the greeting they were expecting. The dance team was wearing matching shirts and themed around the American flag, but for some of the crowd, it was one step too far and it ended up effectively canceling their performance. Co-captain Lindsay Stamp in an exclusive interview with the Jason Rant show on KTTH said the outfit sparked a small percentage of complainants who brought up Israel's war against Hamas and transgender issues. It shocked members of the team who were only there for about 30 minutes at the time. So as soon as they arrived, they're like, oh my God, do you see these like these Trump thumpers with their American flags? Oh, 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 Hamas. Oh, 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 oh. Like how weak are these individuals? Stamp said the team wears American flag theme outfits to show their patriotism, not to make a statement about politics. Yeah. We're a patriotic group. We support our military, our veterans, our first responders. We're a group of patriots. Congratulations. But uh, she said some from Rain County Dance Association with Wild Cordial offered what called an ultimatum. At first we were told we would be just booed, yelled at, and likely many of them would walk out. So they tried to like be like, you know, you don't want to do this. This is, You might have your feelings hurt if you get booed. So just go ahead and cancel. This did not deter us, but we were then given an ultimatum. Remove the flag tops and perform in either street clothes, which most didn't bring as they traveled there in their uniforms, or they would supply us with ECH shirts from years past, or don't perform at all, which effectively was asking us to leave. Team's commitment to patriotism explains why the women unanimously agreed. They weren't removing their American flag t-shirts, and they weren't alone. Our friends, West Coast Country Heat, who were also scheduled to dance for the convention that evening, also did not perform, as they too proudly donned the colors of the country in the same spirit of patriotism that we do. Both of our teams stood in solidarity and put actions towards the Borderline Dance Statement Team. Good for you guys. Stand up for yourselves. So what's next? What the heck? Boom. Switzerland's climate failures breached human rights top courts. Uh-oh. Here we go. So uh, this is a little bit of trouble here. Switzerland violated its citizens' human rights by failing to protect them from climate change's catastrophic effects. 
Europe's top human rights court said Tuesday in a ruling expected to reverberate across future lawsuits, the judgment dubbed Klima Seniorin, after the senior women taking the country to court, came after a trial that saw elderly Swiss women alleged burn was cutting planet warming emissions fat wasn't cutting planet warming emissions fast enough to avoid climate disasters such as heat waves that dispor disproportionately harm older people the strasbourg based european court of human rights is the judicial arm of the council of europe and an international human rights organization separate from the european union its rulings are binding on the council's 46 members which include all 27 eu countries uh-oh look out Today's ruling doesn't include any sanctions on the Swiss government, but it does create a precedent others can use to seek penalties in national courts. Similar to the story we covered in um, yesterday in Hawaii, where at the Supreme Court, they're basically saying that all these energy companies have caused a terrible climate change and they're going to get sued. And then two military dudes came out and were like, we can't shut down the energy companies. We'll literally shut down the globe. This is what happens when you have uneducated people who just read headlines and don't have any sort of substance to themselves and they just rah rah fight and what is the next thing uh, that I can support and put a border around my profile picture so everyone knows that I am on the side of uh, what is right and I have no idea what I'm talking about. There you go. All right, let's go ahead and check this out. We've got uh, Charlie Kirk here, a conservative, staunch conservative, uh, Texas Crumb. Cro Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett suggests exempting black people from paying taxes, but then she prefers reparations instead for this reason. All right, let's just hear what she has to say. Just this past week, I saw, I don't remember which celebrity, but it was actually a celebrity, and I was like, I don't know if that's not necessarily a bad idea, but I'd have to think through it a lot. One of the things that they propose is black folk not have to pay taxes for a certain amount of time because then again that puts money back in your pocket but at the same time it may not be as objectionable to some people about actually giving out dollars but obviously then you start dealing with the different tax brackets and things like that and that's one of the reasons that you know we argue the reparations make sense because so many black folk not only do you owe for the labor that was stolen and killed and all the other things right but the fact is, like, we end up being so far behind, right? And so it's like, how do you bring forth people? Yeah. Exactly. And so it's like, if you if you do the no tax thing, for people that are already, say, struggling and aren't really paying taxes in the first place, it doesn't really... Exactly. They may, they may want those, those checks like they got Ex during COVID. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, haha, -ha, they might want those checks they got during COVID. Like, give us a handout, please. All right, so here it is. Look, check this out. Let me know. White slaves were sold for centuries. Yeah, this is a fact. So check the history books, people. Black people weren't the only slaves. Black people sold black people to the white people. And Muslims sold Christians to anybody who would buy them. All our ancestors took slaves, sold slaves, or were slaves. You're not special. You're just the most recent. And listen up, Snowflake. Let this sink in. I never owned any slaves, and you never picked any cotton. Here ends the lesson. I don't owe you anything. All right. Whack Arnold's is expensive. Or is it? People are whinging about the cost of some McDonald's. Let's find out what they have to say. Okay, so it's twenty-five thirty-nine for 40 piece nuggets and two large fries. You couldn't even throw in the Sprite. You couldn't even throw in like a medium Sprite. Should have thrown in the Sprite. Yeah, so this, the, the truth is, is that McDonald's makes all their money off their drinks, so it's a strategic move. They, they get a bag of syrup that they just throw bubble water, carbonated water into, and uh, that bag of syrup cost them like 30 cents, that corn syrup with whatever Sprite or Pepsi flavor they got there, Coca-Cola probably. And uh, then what? They make, it's like pennies, and then they charge like 2 $3 for it, so the margin's insane. So I did a little bit of calculation in the Sigma Tiger here, uh, in the U.S., four 10-pack nuggets and two large fries, twenty-five thirty-nine, is a deal compared to Canada, which a 10-pack is ten eighty-nine times four large fries, three twenty-nine, for a total of fifty dollars and fourteen cents Canadian, which would come out to thirty-six sixty-nine USD with today's uh, exchange rate. So there you go. That is a deal, absolutely. And Canada is the one getting jacked up, and you shouldn't eat this trash anyway. Oh my God! You've seen the burger in the museum; it's still there. And it looks pretty good. Same as it did the day it came out. 
Anyway, 10,000 likes and subs, mask comes off. I want to thank all my day oneers for coming. We've got 101 subs. Who ever thought we could get there? We only got 900, 9,989 left to go. Or something like that. 889. 9,899. Whatever. I can't even do math anymore. Too much McDonald's math. All right. Sigma Tiger, signing out.